The Cheyenne are an indigenous people of the Great Plains. Their Cheyenne language belongs to the Algonquian language family. Today, the Cheyenne people are split into two federally recognized nations. The Southern Cheyenne, who are enrolled in the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes in Oklahoma, and the Northern Cheyenne, who are enrolled in the Northern Cheyenne tribe of the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation in Montana. At the time of their first European contact, the Cheyenne lived in what is now Minnesota. They were close allies of the Arapaho and loosely aligned with the Lakota. By the early 18th century, they were forced west by other tribes across the Missouri River and into North and South Dakota, where they adopted the horse culture. Having settled the Black Hills of South Dakota in the Powder River country of present-day Montana and Wyoming, they introduced the horse culture to Lakota people about 1730. With the Arapaho, the Cheyenne pushed the Kiowa to the Southern Plains. In turn, they were pushed west by the more numerous Lakota. The main group of Cheyenne, the Sehastano, was once composed of 10 bands that spread across the Great Plains from Southern Colorado to the Black Hills in South Dakota. They fought their historic enemies, the Crow and later, 1856-79, the United States Army. In the mid 19th century, the bands began to split, with some bands choosing to remain near the Black Hills, while others chose to remain near the Platte Rivers of central Colorado. The Northern Cheyenne, known in Cheyenne either as Notamio Mesahiza, meaning Northern Eaters, or simply as Omasahizi, meaning Eaters, live in southeastern Montana on the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation. Tribal enrollment figures as of late 2014 indicate that there are approximately 10,840 members, of which about 4,939 reside on the reservation. Approximately 91% of the population are Native Americans, full or part race, with 72.8% identifying themselves as Cheyenne. Slightly more than one quarter of the population five years or older spoke a language other than English. The Southern Cheyenne, known in Cheyenne as Hibahetaneo, meaning rope people, together with the Southern Arapaho, form the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes in Western Oklahoma. Their combined population is 12,130 as of 2008. In 2003, approximately 8,000 of these identified themselves as Cheyenne. Although with continuing intermarriage, it has become increasingly difficult to separate the tribes. The earliest written record of the Cheyenne was in the mid 17th century, when a group of Cheyenne visited the French Fort Crevecoeur near present day Peoria, Illinois. The Cheyenne at this time lived between the Mississippi River and Mill Lacks Lake. Their economy was based on the collection of wild rice and hunting, especially of bison, which lived in the prairies 70 to 80 miles west of the Cheyenne villages. According to tribal history, during the 17th century, the Cheyenne were driven by the Assiniboine from the Great Lakes region to present-day Minnesota and North Dakota, where they established villages. The most prominent of the ancient Cheyenne villages is Biesterfelt Village in eastern North Dakota along the Cheyenne River. They first reached the Missouri River in 1676. A more recent analysis of early records posits that at least some of the Cheyenne remained in the Millilac region of Minnesota until about 1765, when the Ojibwe defeated the Lakota with firearms, pushing the Cheyenne in turn to the Minnesota River, where they were reported in 1766. On the Missouri River, the Cheyenne came into contact with the neighboring Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arikara people, adopting many of their cultural characteristics. They were first of the later Plains tribes to move into the Black Hills and Powder River country. About 1730, they introduced the horse to Lakota bands, Conflict with migrating Lakota and Ojibwe people forced the Cheyenne further west, and they in turn pushed the Kiowa to the south. By 1776, the Lakota had overwhelmed the Cheyenne and taken over much of their territory near the Black Hills. In 1804, Lewis and Clark visited a surviving Cheyenne village in what is now North Dakota. Such European explorers learned many different names for the Cheyenne and did not realize how the different sections were forming a unified tribe. After being pushed south and westward by the Lakota, the unified Cheyenne people began to create and expand a new territory of their own. Sometime around 1811, the Cheyenne made a formal alliance with the Arapaho people, people of the sky, cloud people, because of their close interaction, also known as people, mankind, tribe of people, which would remain strong throughout their history and into modern times.
The Alliance helped the Cheyenne expand their territory, which stretched from southern Montana through most of Wyoming, the eastern half of Colorado, far western Nebraska, and far western Kansas. As early as 1820, traders and explorers reported contact with Cheyenne at present-day Denver, Colorado, and on the Arkansas River. They were probably hunting and trading in that area earlier. They may have migrated to the south for winter. The Harry Rope Band is reputed to have been the first band to move south, capturing wild horses as far south as the Cimarron River Valley. In response to the construction of Bent's Fort by Charles Bent, a friend of the Cheyenne who established a popular trading area for the Cheyenne, a large portion of the tribe moved further south and stayed around the area. The other part of the tribe continued to live along the headwaters of the North Platte and Yellowstone Rivers. The groups became the Southern Cheyenne, known as Southerners, and the Northern Cheyenne, known as Eaters. The separation of the tribe was only a geographic one, and the two divisions had regular and close contact. In the southern portion of their territory, the Cheyenne and Arapaho warred with the allied Comanche, Kiowa, and Plains Apache. Numerous battles were fought, including a notable fight along the Washita River in 1836 with the Kiowa, which resulted in the death of 48 Cheyenne warriors of the Bowstring Society. In summer 1838, many Cheyenne and Arapaho attacked a camp of Kiowa and Comanche along Wolf Creek in Oklahoma, resulting in heavy losses from both sides. Among the losses were White Thunder, Keeper of the Medicine Arrows and Owl Woman's Father, Flat War Club, Cheyenne, and Sleeping Wolf, Kiowa. Conflict with the Comanche, Kiowa, and Plains Apache ended in 1840 when the tribes made an alliance with each other. The new alliance allowed the Cheyenne to enter the Llano Estacado in the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles and northeastern New Mexico to hunt bison and trade. Their expansion in the south and alliance with the Kiowa led to their first raid into Mexico in 1853. The raid ended in disaster with heavy resistance from Mexican lancers, resulting in all but three of the war party being killed. To the north, the Cheyenne made a strong alliance with the Lakota Sioux, which allowed them to expand their territory into part of their former lands around the Black Hills. They managed to escape the smallpox epidemics, which swept across the plains from white settlements in 1837-39 by heading into the Rocky Mountains, but were greatly affected by the cholera epidemic in 1849. Contact with Euro-Americans was mostly light, with most contact involving mountain men, traders, explorers, treaty makers, and painters. Like many other Plains Indian nations, the Cheyenne were a horse and warrior people who developed as skilled and powerful mounted warriors. A warrior was viewed by the people not as a maker of war, but as a protector, provider, and leader. Warriors gained rank in Cheyenne society by performing and accumulating various acts of bravery in battle known as coups. The title of war chief could be earned by any warrior who performs enough of the specific coups required to become a war chief. Specific warrior societies developed among the Cheyenne as with other Plains nations. Each society had selected leaders who would invite those that they saw worthy enough to their society lodge for initiation into the society. Often, societies would have minor rivalries. However, they might work together as a unit when warring with an enemy. Military societies played an important role in Cheyenne government. Society leaders were often in charge of organizing hunts and raids, as well as ensuring proper discipline and the enforcement of laws within the nation. Each of the six distinct warrior societies of the Cheyenne would take turns assuming the leadership role within the nation. 27, the four original military societies of the Cheyenne were the Swift Fox Society, Elkhorn's Scrapper or Crooked Lance Society, Shield Society, and the Bowstring Men Society. The fifth society is split between the Crazy Dog Society and the famous Dog Soldiers. The sixth society is the Contrary Warrior Society, most notable for riding backwards into battle as a sign of bravery. All six societies and their various branches exist among the Southern and Northern Cheyenne nations in present times. Warriors used a combination of traditional weapons such as various types of war clubs, tomahawks, bows and arrows, and lances as well as non-traditional weapons such as revolvers, rifles, and shotguns acquired through raid and trade. The enemies of the Cheyenne included the Crow, Crowbird people, Shoshone, Blackfeet, same literal meaning, Flathead, Flat-headed people, Nez Perce, Pierce Nose people, 
Ericara, Gros Ventre, Beggars for Meat, Spongers or Lit, Scouting All Over Ones, Assiniboine in Plains Cree, Rabbit People, to the north and west of Cheyenne Territory. By the help of the medicine arrows, the Mahuts, the Cheyenne tribe massacred a Crow camp in 1820. To the east of Cheyenne Territory, they fought with the Sioux, Pawnee, Wolf People, possibly an adaptive from the Pawnee or Wolf Pawnee, Ponca, Cow, Cut Hair People, Iowa, Ho-Chunk, and Omaha. The Cheyenne lost the medicine arrows during an attack on a hunting camp of Pawnees around 1830, 29. South of Cheyenne Territory, they fought with the Kiowa, Greasy Wood Ones, Comanche, Snake People, Ute, Black Skin People, Plains Apache, Occupied Dot Comp Dash People, Osage, Cut Hair People, I, Wichita People, Various Apache Tribes, and Navajo, Indians from out west, collective name for tribes of the Southwest and Great Basin. Many of the enemies the Cheyenne fought were only encountered occasionally, such as on a long distance raid or hunt. Some of their enemies, particularly the Indian peoples of the Eastern Great Plains, such as the Pawnee and Osage, would act as Indian scouts for the U.S. Army, providing valuable tracking skills and information regarding Cheyenne habits and fighting strategies to U.S. soldiers. Some of their enemies, such as the Lakota, would later in their history become their strong allies, helping the Cheyenne fight against the United States Army during Red Cloud's War and the Great Sioux War of 1876. The Comanche, Kiowa, and Plains Apache became allies of the Cheyenne towards the end of the Indian Wars on the Southern Plains, fighting together during conflicts such as the Red River War. The Cheyenne and Arapaho people formed an alliance around 1811 that helped them expand their territories and strengthen their presence on the Plains. Like the Cheyenne, the Arapaho language is part of the Algonquian group, although the two languages are not mutually intelligible. The Arapaho remained strong allies with the Cheyenne and helped them fight alongside the Sioux during Red Cloud's War and the Great Sioux War of 1876, also known commonly as the Black Hills War. On the Southern Plains, the Arapaho and Cheyenne allied with the Comanche, Kiowa, and Plains Apache to fight invading settlers and U.S. soldiers. The Arapaho were present with the Cheyenne at the Sand Creek Massacre, when a peaceful encampment of mostly women, children, and the elderly were attacked and massacred by U.S. soldiers. Both major divisions of the Cheyenne, the Northern Cheyenne and Southern Cheyenne were allies to the Arapaho, who like the Cheyenne are split into Northern and Southern divisions. The Southern Cheyenne and Southern Arapaho were assigned to the same reservation in Oklahoma Indian Territory and remained together as the federally recognized Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes after the reservation was open to American settlement and into modern times. The Northern Arapaho were to be assigned a reservation of their own or share one with the Cheyenne. However, the government failed to provide them with either and placed them on the already established Wind River Indian Reservation in Wyoming with their former enemies, the Shoshone. In the summer of 1825, the tribe was visited on the Upper Missouri by a U.S. Treaty Commission consisting of General Henry Atkinson and Indian Agent Benjamin O'Fallon, accompanied by a military escort of 476 men. General Atkinson and his fellow commissioner left Fort Atkinson on May 16, 1825. Ascending the Missouri, they negotiated treaties of friendship and trade with tribes of the Upper Missouri, including the Arakara, the Cheyenne, the Crow, the Mandan, the Ponca, and several bands of the Sioux. At that time, the U.S. had competition on the Upper Missouri from British traders who came south from Canada. The treaties acknowledged that the tribes lived within the United States vowed perpetual friendship between the U.S. and the tribes, and recognizing the right of the United States to regulate trade, the tribes promised to deal only with licensed traders. The tribes agreed to forswear private retaliation for injuries and to return stolen horses or other goods or compensate the owner. The Commission's efforts to contact the Blackfoot and the Assiniboine were unsuccessful. During their return to Fort Atkinson at the Council Bluff in Nebraska, the Commission had successful negotiations with the Otah, the Pawnee, and the Omaha. In 